you're a part of me and you don't even know it i'm what you need but i'm too afraid to show it if i were you hey good morning good afternoon good evening family welcome 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 to the mental house with me your host Khadija. You know, I want to thank my brother from the diaspora, uh, Louis Spot. And so if y'all can, check out some of his content. I think he does a good job of um, resurfacing our, when I mean our um, American ADOS uh, information and scholars and master teachers that we don't even promote anymore. Like I said, other people know who we are, but we don't seem to care who we are, right? Because we chasing that bag. Chasing that bag. I had the nerve to ask somebody today, would they rather have qualified immunity or would they rather have reparations? And this fool told me he'd rather have reparations. I said, okay, okay, all right, I already know where you coming from, um, because to me, there's nothing more important than police killing us, wholesale, they've been doing it for a long time, and unfortunately, some of y'all would rather have some money, or even the premise, the thought of even having some money would allow you to abandon that thought of doing away with qualified immunity. To me, that is definitely wheels, oars going in the wrong direction. But, nevertheless, I want to talk about uh, uh, Dr. Frances Cress and how she had to educate us sometimes. And so, sit back. Uh, take a load off your feet and listen to one of the greatest scholars that we've ever had, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. I have been talking about racism, white supremacy, for the last, I hate to say it, 37 years. And it has been interesting to me because many people, many of my colleagues in psychiatry have said racism was a part of the past. And black people do not have to talk about racism anymore. And why is that Dr. Francis Welsing continuing to beat on the drum about racism, white supremacy? Because it wasn't long ago, although it's been decades ago, that I debated another Nobel Prize laureate, Dr. William Shockley, the person who won the Nobel Prize for inventing the transistor. And he was going around in the 1970s talking about black people were genetically inferior compared to white people. But I had written a paper that I presented in 1970 at the National Medical Association because then some of my colleagues were talking about racism. And I had written a paper talking about why do people who classify themselves as white have to demean and degrade black people's genetics. And that paper was entitled The Crest Theory of Color Confrontation and Racism and White Supremacy. And in that paper, I talked about the fact that 
when people who classify themselves as white keep saying something is wrong with black people's genetics. See, three of their fingers are pointing back at themselves. And I didn't invent any genetics. I just simply thought about the things that I had been taught in their institutions and in medical school. That the inability to produce skin pigmentation is defined not by Francis Welsing, but by their own scientists as a genetic recessive trait and a genetic deficiency, a genetic deficiency, and it is albinism, A-L-B-I-N-I-S-M, <laughs> albinism meaning the cells in everybody's skin that are called melanocytes that are charged with the production of melanin pigment, the black pigment. If you have a lot of melanin, you're crystal black, a little bit less you look brown, a little bit less you look red, a little bit less you look yellow, and white is almost none at all. Now, they had defined albinism as a genetic deficiency state when they were talking about mice and rats and other forms of life. They never thought that some black person would come along and say, if the majority of the people on the planet have pigmented skin, then as far as human beings are concerned, white skin is albinism. Do you follow what I'm saying? See, in other words, they were busy saying something is wrong with you, when in reality there was something wrong with them. And I explained that this is the reason that they suntan. You see, trying to create color. And I'm updating it and saying now that this is the reason that so many of them are trying to cover their bodies with tattoos. See, now we need to think about that because sometimes monkey see, monkey do. And we don't understand why. See, it's like they do something, we think we have to do something. And some black people who think that they have to get in the sun and tan, too. <laughs> See, but we have been blessed by the Creator with color. And indeed, and in fact, the Creator made us the chosen people in that we are the mothers and fathers of everybody on this planet. You see, and as the original people, we were crystal black people. The color that we have been taught to hate under racism, white supremacy. You see, but this not only explained the sun tanning and maybe now the tattooing, but I said, this is the core of racism, and this is why racism contains within it dynamic, the need to destroy black people in general, but black men in particular. You see, and we are seeing that with the high level of incarceration of black men, with the dropping out of school, and the high levels of unemployment. And that goes back to the fact that black men are perceived as the persons who can cause white genetic annihilation. Now, as a female, women, we have ovaries, and in our ovaries we have the genetic material. But women cannot impose and 
force sexual intercourse. Shall I say that again? <laughs> See, females, we can try to entice and influence. But if a female, if I reached in my purse and pulled out an Uzi, and I started to threaten a man and say, I don't care if your wife is here, you are gonna have sexual intercourse. And I frightened him, he wouldn't be able to. <laughs> See, because the erection disappears in the presence of fear. So women cannot impose sexual intercourse. And so the white collective from the time that Christopher Columbus came out of Spain in his little boats and started the white people circumnavigating the globe, they began to realize, wait a minute, all these other people on the planet are people of color. And the men just like the farmling fathers. Did you hear the term? <laughs> See, black people, we don't need to say founding fathers. We need to talk about the fondling fathers, the Thomas Jeffersons, the George Washingtons, and all of those slaveholders who were raping and taking sexual advantage of black women. They found out that by sexually relating, their white color would disappear. And they began to understand, wait a minute, when they realized that they were just a tiny, tiny minority population on the planet. And see, we're still busy calling ourselves minorities. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They are the minority on the planet, but they know the value of saying repeatedly to other people that they are the minorities because it makes them feel weak and it makes them feel vulnerable. So we really need to start talking about the global white minority. The global white minority. The global white minority. See, and the global white minority realized that for them to genetically survive on planet Earth, they have to have control over all of the non-white people. And because black people have the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation, the heaviest pressure has to be on us as a people, as a total people, and as black men in particular. And so therefore, we learned, many of us learned before we learned how to read or write. If you are black, get back. If you are brown, stick around. If you are yellow, you're mellow. And if you're white, you're all right. They were just color coding what they needed to do for white genetic survival. And that is continuing on the planet today. So I maintain that we need to update our understanding and understand the news like they're trying to tell us is just a joke and that it doesn't mean anything. I would suggest that for every person who hasn't already read the book without sanctuary, it's a pictorial essay of all the lynchings and castrations of black men and burning of black men as white people stood around and cheered. And in some cases, taking home body parts. We need to look at that and study that. And I say, don't waste any energy hating white people. That's not taking us anywhere. It's like if we sat down at a chessboard to play chess at a tournament, you don't beat your opponent by hating your opponent. 
You have to take all of your energy and understand exactly the moves that the opponent is going to make and make certain that you know how to counter those moves. Now this is not a mystery to black people. Black people are expert playing basketball, playing football, playing baseball. All of these are psyching your opponent what moves is the opponent going to make and you make counter moves that can checkmate the opponent and move on to victory. So we need to understand and master, instead of trying to ignore racism and pretend that it doesn't exist or that it went away some time ago, no, racism is alive and well. Racism is a total global system that as Neely Fuller outlined in his textbook for victims of racism, textbook for victims of white supremacy, racism operates in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Now I'm adding to that health because people are busy right now talking about health care disparities. But there are disparities in all of those areas of activity. There are disparities in economics and disparities in education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and health. And I say disparities in entertainment why? When only certain kinds of images can be shown of black people, where negative and demeaning and degrading and buffoon-like images are portrayed of black people, that is helping to maintain the system of racism, white supremacy. Or in entertainment, when the system of racism says, I know people like public enemy, they started out with giving a political message. But when they put that political message on a beat, the system of racism said they can revolutionize the thinking of their people. So no, we have to pay them large sums of money and make some of them millionaires. But the price they will have to pay is calling themselves dogs and calling themselves gangsters and thugs and calling women bitches and hoes and bow wows because they understand if you can get a people to demean and to degrade themselves then you have beaten them you have beaten them and you have defeated them No. Woo! Thank you, Brother Louis Spot. Again, y'all check out Brother Louis Spot and um, let's give him some support over there. And I'm thanking him for acknowledging our great scholar, Dr. Queen Mother Frances Crest. And what she said, I don't know how anybody can argue with that. Now, if you want to, let's do it. Come on, Cletus. Let's do this. Okay. But in the meantime, leave your comment below. And if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the channel. We will see you in the next video.